This is All the Damn Things, the podcast committed to helping women achieve your dreams, even after going through deeply challenging experiences. My name is Bevan Farrand, the founder of the Take the Damn Chance movement and creator of the Do the Damn Thing method. Yes, I say damn a lot, but it does mean something. It stands for decide and declare, attend your own party, moments not minutes, and now is the time. When it's come to navigating my own deeply challenging experiences and bringing my biggest dreams to life, this framework has changed my life, and I know that it can make a huge impact on yours. When we talk about getting like getting clear on your needs and you and we then talk about interacting with other people, I worry sometimes that people think it sounds really selfish to be like, well, I need to get my needs met. You do, because more often than not, we're not even considering what our needs are. I want you to be able to change your lives if you want to. Um, So part of it is taking care of your tribe. You You invite, you interact, you nurture, you evaluate and make sure that your needs are being met. Invite more people in if they're not. If somebody doesn't have the capability or capacity to support you or to do what you're asking, you have to decide, we all have to decide there, are, there is specific support that we need. For example, yesterday I needed help moving a toilet. Now, if my neighbor had not been, able, his name's Ed, if Ed had not been able to do that, I would have asked somebody else because I didn't, it was not, it, I didn't need support from a specific person. I didn't need Ed to be the one to do it. Luckily, he was the first person I asked. He was the first person who said yes. So I needed specific support. So it's one thing if you're like, okay, there's this person I really like, like this friend, I want her to be more of a friend. I'm asking her like, hey, hey, can we get together, you know, for dinner? And she is not able to, right? If you want support from a specific person, from that person, it might not look like exactly what you expect it to when you like start it, but you can say, oh, okay, you can't do dinner. Is there something else we could do? Could we maybe take the kids to a water park? Uh, like, And by that, I mean splash pad. Let's not lose children at a water park. Um, could we go to a movie? Could we go for a walk, right? Because we have to look at specific support and specific people. If you need specific support, it may not come from the person that you think it will. And if you need support from a specific person, it might not look the way you initially expect it to. So you, when you're looking at, and this is something I go more deeply into in um, all the do the damn thing method stuff, but when you look at your needs, right, you're looking at what are the needs you need to have fulfilled and then are there specific people that you just want support from? Because like when you, uh, if we're looking at kind of a a common um, question that comes up, a common scenario that comes up with my clients is, hey, I want to start this new business and my husband isn't supporting me or I'm scared to act like my friends don't feel supportive. So therefore I'm not supported by these people in my life. But a lot of times it's because they can't give you that specific support that you initially asked for. So if you are saying, hey, I really want you to support me on this, and they're like, uh, I don't know what that means, first of all, then you can say, well, this would be most helpful. And if that's not possible, then these are some other ideas. You also want to look at how can you communicate in a way that makes it easier for them to say yes. If you have heard my story that in 2019, I got laid off from a job that I absolutely loved. It was the third time I'd been laid off in under 10 years. We had a four month old son. We had a two year old daughter. We had just like bought a van. I had taken a three month maternity leave, like all the things that we were not ready and prepared to be a one income family. And I decided I was not going to go look for a job. I was going to start my own business. And what I did, because I knew how Mark thought, he was an engineer. He responded really well to data and facts and spreadsheets. And I happen to love spreadsheets too. So I made him a spreadsheet and I was like, babe, here's how much money we have in savings. Here's my severance package. Here's how much I can get from unemployment every week. Um, And so given all this, 
if I don't make another penny going forward, we will run out of money on October 12th. Now, he had a job still, so there was still money coming in, but we would have run out of this money on October 12th, which, like, I'm sure some people are like, oh, my God, that's terrifying. You were going to run out of money. And I was like, yeah, but that's five months away. And the likelihood of me not making another penny from here going forward is slim to none because I'm not going to sit down on the side of the road and just wish and hope I'm going to get into action. This was before I understood the do the damn thing method. So I didn't like say I'm going to write my damn manifesto, but that's part of where the damn manifesto came from was because I got super clear on what it is that I wanted. I did not want to go back and work for somebody else. I did not want to put all of my financial health into the hands of any one person. I wanted to start my own business. Um, I knew that what I wanted to do was take what I'd been doing for 10 years in digital marketing, launch management, brand direction, all the things I'm really good at helping businesses and entrepreneurs and small businesses grow their business. And I was going to use it with small businesses, entrepreneurs, and help them grow their business. I It made him feel more comfortable more confident supporting me, not just because he loved me and not just because he believed in me and wanted me to do the things I wanted to do, but because I knew how to communicate with him in a way that made it easier for him to say yes. So as you're looking at, okay, I want to have um, this kind of support and these people just know that it may not match up like ding, 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 all the way down. The people who matter don't mind, and the people who mind don't matter. I know how hard it is to feel rejected by a friend, to feel rejected by somebody that you would just like to have a, as a friend. I know how hard that is, and it will not kill you. I know that sounds like really dramatic and maybe oversimplifying things, but it is a blip. And if it is the fear of being rejected, like it does, I guess what I'm saying is it doesn't mean anything about you as a person. 99.99% of the time is about that person. They've got stuff going on that we don't know about. They just had a baby and we didn't know about it. Um, they're, they've got They've lost a job and we didn't know about it. They're having marital issues and we didn't know about it. Um, their car broke down and we didn't know about it. We don't know. And unless we want to ask, like, hey, why don't you want to get coffee with me, right? Unless we want to ask, um, then we're never going to know. And so that is a story that we make up in our heads about why somebody says one thing or another. There isn't one story. There isn't one answer. There are so many answers because we can't just look at our resources as just money we have time, energy, attention, creativity, focus, space, all of these resources. There are times where we have more time, more energy, more space than money. Like if you're starting a business and you have more time and creativity than you do money, then you're probably Googling how to build a website. You're probably building your website yourself. You're probably writing your own copy. You're probably doing your own social media because you have the time. As things progress and as things are busier, you will have less time and you will have more money. And that is where you will start to invest money into things because you are basically buying back your time. When we're looking at our needs and we're looking at our damn manifesto, what is the thing that we want more than anything else right now? Who are the people we want in our lives? We've got to start looking at actual data, facts, real, real things. That's why I push back when it's like, I need this magical thing to happen. I am not here for magical thinking. I am here to show you that if there is something you want to bring to life in your life, you can do it. You can do it. We're going to break it down and say, well, this is what it's probably going to take to get there. We focus on the yes and the why. We release the how. It might look different than we initially think. Now we're talking about the who. Who do you need? Who do you need in your life to support that? You start small. We do layered declarations and build it out. We look at micro actions, right? It's not magical thinking. I didn't build collaborate.work because I was doing magical thinking. I didn't build take the damn chance for magical thinking. 